the remote view of Mars revealed in a CIA document of May 22, 1984 gives details of a planetary catastrophe that led many refugees to go out in spaceships to safer places more than one million years ago. This leads to the intriguing possibility that a frozen civilization quickly found recently in Antarctica with a cannibalized spacecraft nearby, was the remains of a colony originally established by Martian refugees. This scenario is consistent with the claims of Secretary of the Secret Space Program, Corey Good, who says that extraterrestrial refugees have been finding refuge on Earth for at least 500,000 years and that preparations are currently underway to officially reveal the excavations of an Antarctic civilization frozen instantly. On March 28, 2016, Good described several insider sources who had told him about the influx of refugees from other planets during Earth's history, and it seems that the most recent information I have obtained is telling us that the Earth received refugees, at different points in history, from a couple of different planets, at least, in our solar system where the planets failed and the inhabitants left and they came to Earth as refugees. Good said Mars was one of the planets from which the refugees originated. The Martians were highly technologically advanced with anti-gravity spacecraft. They engaged in an aggressive war that led to the planetary catastrophe and to the refugees who left for Earth. Good tells what the inhabitants of the Inner Earth told him, and the people in the Inner Earth Council stated that the different inhabitants of the planets in our solar system were extremely technologically advanced and extremely aggressive and that they destroyed their civilizations and had to be relocated here as refugees by other ET races that came. According to Good, Mars in particular was hit by a series of environmental catastrophes that were related to devastating wars with the inhabitants of a nearby super-Earth, around which both Mars and our current Moon orbited 500,000 years ago. The super-Earth orbited the Sun in the area of the asteroid belt as it exists today between Mars and Jupiter. Mars at the time had abundant water and the atmosphere rich in oxygen to house a large population on its surface. The existence of abundant water and oxygen on Mars in its distant past has recently been corroborated by scientists. The events that led to the destruction of the super-Earth also destroyed much of the surface population of Mars, and eliminated the bulk of its atmosphere according to the That Good Read in Smart Crystal Pills to which he had access during his 20 years of Secret Space Service program. It was postulated that Mars was probably a moon of that super-Earth, and that it was heavily damaged on one side by massive impacts and that most likely also stripped its main atmosphere at the time, and it never recovered. The force of the destruction of the super-Earth propelled Mars into its current planetary orbit. So, was there a super-Earth that was destroyed in a titanic battle, which resulted in one of its moons being sent to Earth's orbit, and another being sent to its current orbit as the planet Mars? The first major scientist to seriously investigate the possibility of the asteroid belt being the remains of a previous planet is Dr. Thomas Van Flandern, who was the chief astronomer of the United States Naval Observatory. He wrote several scholarly works on what he described as the exploded planet hypothesis, which suggested that the main asteroid belt in our solar system arose from the destruction of a large planet around which Mars once orbited. Putting all these tests together, we have strong indications for two original planets near what is now the main asteroid belt, the hypothetical planet V and planet K. These were probably gas giant planets with moons of significant size, such as Mars, before they exploded. The above summarizes the evidence that Mars was not an original planet, but rather a moon of a now exploited planet that occupies that approximate orbit. Many of these points are the expected consequences of having a massive planet exploding nearby, thus flying the opposing hemisphere and leaving the protected hemisphere relatively unscathed. Especially significant in this regard is the fact that half of Mars is saturated with craters, and half have few craters. 
Van Flanderen's exploded planet hypothesis provides scientific support for Good's claims that both the Moon and Mars are two ancient moons of a super-Earth. The claims of the CIA about the history of Mars, therefore, are supported in various ways by the information of Good and Van Flanderen. The remote seer described a planet with violent storms and volcanic activity that was very green. This certainly sounds like Earth which at that time was probably the only planet in our solar system that would fit such a description. This leads to the question of whether the escaping Martians established colonies on Earth, at least one of which was in Antarctica. In Mars' description of the remote seer, he described them as very tall and thin, and also possessing spacecraft used to transport refugees to the safe location, the Earth. This is consistent with what Good claims to have found when he was taken to Antarctica in early January 2017 to see firsthand what was being dug in secret. In a private conference on January 24, Good confirmed his earlier reports about a pre-Adamite civilization found frozen in Antarctica, which was very tall and thin. He described three oval spacecraft 50 kilometers long nearby that appeared to have been cannibalized. Such massive ships would have been the ideal space coffers that carried many thousands of Martians fleeing as described by the remote seer. In previous interviews, Good described being taken into the interior of Antarctica, well below two miles of ice, and witnessed that it was volcanically very active, and that abundant thermal energy was available to be used as a source of energy. In the following graphic illustration of what he witnessed in a secret Antarctic base, the steam vents show the intense thermal energy used as an energy source. Good's description of the continuous volcanic activity in Antarctica is supported by abundant scientific evidence. For example, on February 19, an NPR report dealt with NASA scientists conducting experiments around Mount Erebus due to the lava flowing beneath its icy exterior, which they believe is similar to what is likely to be find the NASA probes on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. In addition, a second volcano was discovered under half a mile of Antarctic ice that is also still active and can erupt at any time. Good's accounts of what he witnessed in Antarctica during separate visits is consistent with the scenario described by the CIA's remote viewer. The Martians had to flee from their dying world in a spaceship to another planet, the Earth, that was volcanically very active at that time. Apparently, Antarctica, if it was chosen as a safe place for a colony of refugee Martians, was located in a more tropical place that was very green and volcanically active about a million years ago. The descendants of the Martian refugees who lived in Antarctica were apparently caught off guard by a sudden pole shift that occurred about 12,000 years ago and led to their being frozen. Good has said that important announcements about the discoveries in Antarctica are coming, which are expected to release some, but not all of the truth about the discovered civilization that was instantly frozen. His claim is supported by internet mining expert Cliff High whose model of predictive linguistics led him to conclude in January that important announcements about Antarctic discoveries are coming. If the refugee Martians fled to Earth a million years ago and settled in Antarctica, the official revelation of these events would revolutionize our understanding of world history. The digital release of declassified CIA documents detailing remote viewing experiments contributes incrementally to the disclosure process. The truth about historical events in Antarctica would help significantly in our global civilization by avoiding a fate similar to what previous civilizations have found on Earth and in other parts of our solar system.